So I would like to start as usual by uh, thanking the organizers for inviting me here. It's a great place to be again. Not great weather, unfortunately, this week, but um, hopefully we'll improve later. I will try to give a brief, um, uh, the main part of this talk is about a recent experiment we did with uh, uh, the Google USB group improving MBL physics in superconducting qubits. And the idea is to use interacting photons as the main player here. So um, I will give a brief review of, of, um, of what interacting photons for quantum simulations are, and then I will get into the main part. Um, uh, this is the team. Some of them are here. This is Jiravat, who was mainly involved in this project, and Kianfeng. They are sitting somewhere there, two of my students. And Victor, which is not here, he was also involved. And I would also th like to thank the, the Google guys for the experimental part. Um, OK, so experimental quantum simulations, I mean, state of the art and problems. Uh, we, we had this morning uh, um, talks about uh, ultra cold atoms. It's one of the most popular platforms. Beautiful physics have been checked there in the sense of quantum phase transitions, both Hubbard models, Fermi Hubbard models. Then there is the linear optics setups uh, where people have been looking at topological physics and also application bottle sampling and chemistry. Of course, ion traps for ideal for digital quantum simulation and, and, and also quantum magnetism. Uh, and superconducting qubit is another platform which I would mainly focusing on, like the theory things I'll be talking about. Uh, you have a kind of a picture in your head will be in this kind of setups. And uh, ideally, if you look at controllability and scalability, to do no trivial physics, you should like to be somewhere here for a fully fledged quantum simulator. Most of the experiments, unfortunately, go down here. But uh, we have the issues of uh, decoherence and interaction with the environment. But this is something that is especially uh, uh, the last uh, few years has been shown that this might be possible to really do interesting physics somewhere here. So interacting photons. Interacting photons in this sense is maybe a hybrid between normal photons as we know them in, uh, in linear optics and, and, and kind of the microwave version in superconducting qubits where you can get them really to strongly interact in a cavity QED or CQQED sense, as I will explain a little bit later. Um, and if you want to look at it in a sort of a photon number versus interaction strength per photon diagram, this is where linear optics is, and this is what we learn at school. Classical linear optics, again, it's a, a big field for many years with many applications in technology as well. Quantum information and quantum science motivated the, the, the field of photon-photon quantum nonlinear optics. And the stuff I'll be talking about lie in this area, which is many body quantum nonlinear optics, um, where we have high interaction strengths and, and, and uh, large photon numbers as well. Um, so an outlook of this talk, I will talk briefly how to engineer many body photonic states in quantum nonlinear setups for quantum simulation of in and out of equilibrium phases. I will briefly mention the tools we use in this, in this uh, field in this trade. It's open quantum systems approach, master equations, many body master equations, lots of numerics, uh, especially in 1D, types of network numerics. Then I will briefly uh, mention the James Cummings Hubbard model, as is known now, or the James Cummings lattice model, and, and which is kind of generated out of this cavity QED arrays. I will mention what uh, fractional quantum whole states of photons and I will mo mostly talk about this recent MBL stuff, many body localization. Uh, I won't have time to talk about uh, slow light setups and, and, and quantum nonlinear uh, non optic setup based on Rydberg atoms, uh, where you can do beautiful things like Ludwig liquids or photon steering models, Wigner crystals, uh, people in the audience that have been experts in this field. And uh, I have not time either to talk about integrated optical systems for, for emulations. I wouldn't call it a, a quantum simulation or such, but they're interesting works. OK, so 
uh, strongly interacting photons, many body quantum linear optics and quantum simulation. So as I mentioned, photons naturally do not interact, so it's kind of counterintuitive how one would think of them as a main player to, to, to simulate nature, condensed matter or, or, or even high energy physics, because they have no mass, they, they, they don't carry charge, they, and, and if you try to get two photons to talk to each other in, in low energies, it's almost impossible, basically. So uh, if you use a nonlinear material, then we have what's called the semi-classical regimes, you have some uh, nonlinear effects, but again, for that, for this optical care effect that is known in the, in the field to, to be appreciable, you need to have billions, trillions of photons uh, to work. If you want to get photons to interact in the quantum regime, you need to use a mediator. Now, what is the mediator? It's an atom, but you need the photon as well to, uh, uh, to trap it and keep it for a long time in a, you know, localized in space. One way to do that in cavity QED is to use two very good high reflective mirrors. You stick your photon in here, it bounces back and forth many times, millions of times. Every time it goes through the atom, it interacts a little bit. So if the coherent interaction between the atom and the photon is large, and then the loss, the times that the photon gets lost from the cavity or gets escaped due to spontaneous emission outside, then you are in what we call the strong coupling regime. Strong coupling regime is a very fundamental regime to do quantum technologies with light matter systems. Um, it has been achieved in different platforms. The ones I've been talking about here is mainly superconducting qubits. So let's do a little bit more on the maths of this model. So you have the uh, a bosonic field or, or, or the photon operator in this language which just describes one photon trapped into this uh, cavity uh, uh, the two mirrors. It has some frequency, the atom is in here, and you have the atom-photon interaction, which called, this is the James Cummings model. Uh, this is a very fundamental model in cavity and, and, and quantum optics. If you diagonalize this, you see you have uh, the, the eigen energies depend on the photon, and this plus minus the coupling, and the photon uh, number. So as you go up, this is the ground state. This is the uncoupled states which correspond to um, E0 and G1, empty cavity, an atom excited, or one photon, an atom in the ground state, and so on as you go up. Because of the interaction, these two states hybridize and you get these two eigenstates. These are the real eigenstates of the system now. I have uh, ignored losses in this diagram. What losses do is they broaden these levels so if you are not in the strong complex regime, you don't have this nice splitting. If you try to stick a photo in and, 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 and kind of excite the system, you see that you have to be resonant with this transition from the ground state to what's called the one minus state. Now, the second photon, as it goes in, it will, it will find a mismatch to the next available energy. That creates an effective nonlinearity, a, a blockade effect, like electron blockade, but now this is for photons. That's because of strong coupling. And this is the key behind these interacting photons for many body uh, simulations and many body effects. Um, so if you scale this up experimentally, how these systems look like in the microwave regime, this is a 15 site chip, the more recent one by Google. Most of my talk will be on the nine chip. You have 15 sites here, if you can, you can count, and each of them you can model as a kind of a nonlinear or a cavity James Cummings system. Now, uh, you can also do that th same things in the optical regime, interfacing called atom of nanophotonics, and also in the Rebec, uh, using Rebec atoms. Now, so assuming this is possible, let's try to build a model for this and see what kind of many body physics we can do. Um, you have some sort of lattice, each of these lattice, these are the, the corresponding um, mirrors, as I said, they trap the light here, the photon, and you put your atomic interactions. Atoms can be superconducting artificial atoms or quantum dots in semiconductor. It could be different um, implementation. This is general at the moment. Then exploiting the photon blockade, maybe you can build some sort of lattice model or a James Cummings lattice model that has some sort of uh, interesting ground states or, or, or many body correlations. So the the simplest Hamiltonian one can write, and this is what we did 
almost like exactly 10 years ago, was to take the James Cummings, Cummings GED type of uh, Hamiltonian and just add a hoping term where photons can hope from one cavity to the next, basically just from here to there and backwards. And you can write it in 2D or one dimension as well. Um, of course, one has to be careful here because these are lossy systems. So what I say at the first part of the talk, I will ignore the losses, then I will say how do you can do driven dissipative simulations here. So by assuming a single two-level system, you write this Hamiltonian in its cavity, and then let's say we look at the ground state of this for a specific feeling fraction. So we put a few photons, let's say we have 10 sites in one dimension, we put 10 photons, and then we diagonalize and we look at the ground state. And let's say we can change the hopping in this implementation, actually, usually in optical axis, you change, change the hopping and the interaction. In our case, it's the detuning between the atom and the cavity. If you can detune, then, then the photon blockade becomes weaker, and you have, uh, you know, photons do not obey the photon blockade, where in the other regime, there is photon blockade in each of them. So at the photon blockade regime, if you look at the ground state, you have some sort of mode like state, as you would expect, because photons are repelling each other. So if the repulsion is larger than the corresponding hopping, and you look at the fluctuations of what is, this is the total number of excitations, atoms and photons per side, as a function of the detuning, you go via what's called uh, something that looks like a phase transition, and uh, like a quantum phase transition. So that was kind of a preliminary um, observation back 10 years ago, and, and which kind of indicated that maybe we can do many better features with interacting photons. Um, if you go to two dimensions and you do the corresponding mean field theory, then you have the similar structure as in the bose hubbard model, where you have mode lobes uh, for specific feeling fractions with the extra ability that you can have uh, the detuning as an extra dimension here, the detune between the atom and the, and the light, because the, 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 the excitation here is what we call in, in, in cavity QED, dress states or atom photon excitations. So you can play with the, the, the nature of the excitation to be more atomic or more photonic and have a richer structures and interface diagrams are to equilibrium. Now, of course, if you can do that, then you can do spin models. You can simulate uh, interesting uh, generalized spin models, even in 2D, in theory. All this is theory at the moment. Um, so, or you can do two-dimensional gauge fields by having two-dimensional cavity arrays somehow constructed where you can, as the photons hop around, they can pick up a non-trivial phase and implement a, a, a gauge field or a, or a quantum whole state of light. Uh, I don't have time to go through the details of this, but I'm happy to talk about it later. Experimentally, where this field is, is so if you take recently, this is two years ago, this is just a, a unit cell, three of superconducting kind of sites in this case, then by modulating the, the hopping elements between the photons, between these three sites in time, this is slightly different than the previous uh, implementation here, which we modulate the laser phases, then you can create chiral states of photons that circulate around, basically, in this fundamental unit. In principle, it could be scaled up and do more uh, larger site kind of quantum hole physics. Um, and I will end with this uh, first introductory part and say that um, although there are complementary uh, advantages of using photons to do many body physics at the ground state and, and closed systems. Ideally, this is an open system. By, by default, it's an open system. So ideally, we would like to look at driven dissipative and uh, out of equilibrium phenomena. This is where the, its real set would be, and this is where the field is really the last f uh, few years, um, where you have drive, you have uh, uh, losses, and you look at out of equilibrium states, steady states, and uh, it has been shown that you can get exotic, exotic states of, uh, yeah, uh, exotic phases like photon crystallization or thermionization at uh, uh, beyond expected by stability in this, in this kind of systems. Um, experimentally, the most recent one is uh, this 72 James Cummings 
Hubbard was saying, cavity arrays model where you have, uh, basically this is one dimension and each of these nodes correspond to a resonator with an artificial atom and trans one in this case. Uh, what these guys in Princeton did is they, they pump from one side and, and they, they observe a dissipative phase transition in this 72 couple cavities uh, lattice. Uh, there are more works in this direction, but I want to focus, as I said, on, on, uh, on the MBL. So let me wrap up this part by saying that the richness of the system in out of equilibrium simulations is, uh, except that it's naturally open, that you can play with the drives. You can have coherent drive in each of the lattice sites. You can have parametric drive where you pump in between and you have some sort of nonlinear processes that generate pairs of photons, or you can have a, a weak, almost quantum or higher uh, semi-classical driving situations. And then eventually what you need to do, you need to solve this massive many-body master equation, which you have your Bose-Hubbard physics here, or the James Cummings Hubbard, plus the dissipation from the atoms and the, and the dissipation from the, from the cavity. And look at uh, either transit or steady state physics. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is not the only way to go. You can have <coughs> quantum nonlinear many body physics for photons in slow light setups and Rydberg atoms. Uh, there have been uh, experiments by various groups and also theory by, by, by people in the audience in, in doing interesting many body states here. Um, uh, I, 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 won't, I don't really have time on this, but it's also a nice system to do interesting strong correlated states of light. So in summary, um, we have uh, larger left scales that allow for efficient preparation, detection, and single site addressing. This is something I should, I should highlight compared to optical lattice in the sense that if the cavities can be further apart, there is no optical wavelength limitation here. The state correlation are measured by using standard quantum optical techniques, and driven dissipative nature is, is is, is in, in here and here, so out of equilibrium should be doable. So to, to, to get into the second part, can we use the systems to do something beyond the ground state, like beyond mode transitions or, or, or the steady state physics? Can we do like the full spectrum? Can we look at many mode localization, for example? So a, a brief in, um, introduction to MBL. Um, so there is a fundamental assumption in, in, um, in, in statistical mechanics, quantum statistical mechanics, that all microstates associated with a given ma uh, macrostate have equal probability. And there is a big ergodic hypothesis that says that um, the system, if it's ergodic, it exposes all accessible microstates over time. And I have a small like a toy picture here where you can see that in this case, you have breakdown of ergodicity in this kind of classical trajectory picture. The question is what happens when you really have quantum, uh, quantum systems, interacting quantum systems. So the, the, the question was, if I have a closed many body quantum system, can it thermalize by its own without interacting with the outside? Or it doesn't, and when, when does it do it? Because quantum mechanics unitary. If I start from a quantum state and I have unitary evolution, there is no reservoir, there's nothing outside, I will never thermalize. But if I look at the subsystem of the, of the, or if I split my system into a smaller system and, and a bigger part, and I look at the local observables here, the local density matrix, and I trace out, I use this reservoir, then I can, can I describe this as a thermal state? And when, when, when this uh, hypothesis breaks down, which is also known as the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. This is a big question in condensed matter physics. Uh, we are not really condensed matter physics people in our group, but we wanted to check this from the interacting photos and quantum simulation perspective. And the story is the following. So, sorry, how yes. Long say, sorry, say how again. Large well, it can even be one, one particle, actually, one, one site. So, um, now, pictorially, how this looked like. Um, the, the, the linear version of this, the easy, I mean, not that easy, I mean, it took Anderson to solve it in 1961, is that if you have non-interacting particles in a disordered lattice, then um, uh, you can have what's called 
um, uh, for, for a large enough disorder and depends on the dimension as well, in 3D you have uh, localized states. All eigenstates are localized. Now, it seems that this is true also for weak interactions, but where is really the limit when you put interaction? When do you go from uh, localization to the extended thermalized phase? So in this kind of picture. Uh, here's the localized phase, and this is kind of the thermalized phase. And what are the implications in quantum information? Because we are talking about quantum many body systems that are massive systems. So if the system retains some memory, it doesn't really thermalize at the end, maybe we have a perfect quantum memory, for example. So, but for that, you need to really look at the whole spectrum. So it's a hard problem, um, especially for many body physics. The recent experimental works in the direction involved cold atoms where they, they, they prepare some state and they, they look at the population in ballast. You put the atoms in half of the largest and you see how they spread. Um, there's, a, there's a line of works in theory and in, in uh, using numerics, trying to probe the problem. But remember, this is exact diagonalization. We have to look at all the eigenstates. Approximate methods do not work, so it's a hard problem. If you go beyond a few sites, it's a very difficult problem. So what we tried here with the Google guys is we, we took the, the kind of older chip, now there's a 15 chip, this is the state of the art, or like at least publicly, nine, nine sites. Now instead of um, doing quantum computing, I mean, these guys look at this as qubits, we say why don't you look at them as nonlinear harmonic oscillators, because effectively the qubits are in the hardcore regime of a nonlinear harmonic oscillator. They really have microwave photons here, excitations. So you can write down a nice kind of boss Hubble type of Hamiltonian with the frequency, the, the, the nonlinear pattern, the hopping. So if you modulate the potential in a quasi-periodic sense, then you can actually show that you can, you can probe uh, uh, MBL physics here. And that's, that's, that's the, the last part. Be before I get into that, I will explain how, how you do spectroscopy here. How do you really, because ideally we need to look at all the eigenstates, all the eigenspectrum. How do we extract the eigenspectrum here? Uh, the way to do it in this closed, very coherent system, we develop a kind of a novel method, kind of novel because it relates to early things in, in, in quantum mechanics, but nobody has really done it in this sense before. So you have a a many body system, you poke it, you see how it vibrates, basically. That's, this is how we extract the, the eigenfrequencies, the eigenenergies, but we need to do this quantum mechanically. So, so you start with some initial state, psi zero, you let the system evolve, and we would like to get these energies out, and also the corresponding amplitudes. How do you do that? So let's, let's just look at some examples. So you have this, the state, it evolves, you want to calculate some sort of observables and follow the, the time evolution, if you can choose the right initial states, if you don't have, for a general initial state, there will be energy differences here. So if I have this experimentally somehow, and if I, I, I do a Fourier transform, I get energy differences. How can I fix this kind of reference and get absolute energies and do my spectroscopy? The, the key for that is to choose your initial states cleverly, and as an example, this is a toy example, but just to illustrate the method, just two side tight binding model, you have hopping, and these are the operators that you measure, you could measure in an experiment, and this is the initial states. If you put this in a cell state, you see the expectation value oscillates with a, with a frequency a difference. That's not good. If this one is zero, it's not good. If you take this state with the superposition of the, of the first qubit or a first oscillator, then you see that for this one, again, you get energy difference, but for this one, you get absolute energies. So if I have this expectation value somehow in my experiment, then I have the spectrum. This is kind of a toy example, but it was the same in the main body case. So, so the protocol is the following. You have your lattice. This is the, the main body spectroscopy kind of part. You start, you put, let's say, one photon in the first side. You let it evolve, you do all your measurements. In this case, the operators look like A dagger plus A, this kind of quantity operators. Then you put it in another side, you do the same, and you calculate as a function of time, you calculate the Fourier spectrum, as in here, and you extract the eigenenergies. So if you do this for, for this nine-site chip, what you get experimentally, you get this kind of picture. This, the first qubit, this is the ninth qubit, and this is basically where 
the corresponding resonances are, and this is where how big the corresponding amplitude is. So by superposing all this, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, nine eigenenergies. This is one photon, one particle in nine sites. So we should get nine energies. That's exactly what we get in the experiment. Now, so it works, basically, and so on. If you put the interactions, again, it's a similar process. Now, to benchmark this and see how good the spectroscopy method is, we decided in the linear physics, this is before we put interaction, to try something kind of exciting and maybe not trivial, which is the Harper model or the butterfly Hamiltonian. In two-dimensional quantum hole physics, we know that the, um, the corresponding uh, spectrum looks like a, this famous butterfly as a function of the magnetic field. You can do similar physics by projecting this 2D into one dimension. It's called the Harper model, where the magnetic field appears in the modulation of the lattice. So I'll skip the mapping, but it's also the spectrum. So this is the energy, this is the magnetic field. If you run it for 100 sites, you get the famous butterfly. Now, if you, we have nine sites, so it's not really, um, it's a baby butterfly in a sense, but still it looks like a butterfly. You have the, the head, this is a theoretical prediction, the tail and the, the wings. Doing the photon protocol, putting the photons in, evolving and doing the spectroscopy, we get this. So you get the Fourier amplitudes here, so you get actually pretty, pretty close to a butterfly. It's, 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 so the method works, the spectroscopy method works. If you look at the arrows, this is a megahertz. I mean, this is, this is slightly higher because of some systematic error in the experiment, but in general, it's pretty close to the theory. So that's, that's linear physics. Uh, to do interactions, uh, are really doing uh, the, 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 the main thing, you take the same Hamiltonian now, this one-dimensional Hamiltonian, we put a photon in a side, we let it evolve, et cetera, et cetera. But now to do interactions, you need to put two photons or three photons to really access the interacting eigenstates. And the, the, the Hamiltonian we chose is this uh, Aubry-Audre model with interactions. Why we chose the Aubry-Audre model? Because we know this is known for one dimension where the ergodic phase and the localized phase are. So if, if the disorder is smaller than 2J, then you have the ergodic, in the other case you have the MBL. So, so we put now interactions and we checked how this breaks down and where, basically. And how do we do that? We do that because we have all the eigenstates. In this case, they're around, it's less than 100, so we can resolve them for the nine sites. And, and then we, we use we do this uh, participation ratio, and we want to distinguish between what's called the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble, where you have the ergodic phase or the Poisson distribution, which is the, uh, the localite phase. And this is the experimental result. Again, this is the Hamiltonian. You fix u over j at three and a half, which is a reasonably large value. As you go up in the disorder, so this is zero disorder, as you go up, in the zero disorder, you have the Aubry Andre model, and you have this, and you see where, how the, the uh, GOE looks like, and as you increase, you go to towards the Poisson distribution, which is shown here. Now, if you make cuts here, just to make this, remember for the linear case, delta by J2 is was the, the transition, but this is, this is the interacting case. So if you make a cut, then you get that these are the corresponding, uh, uh, the dotted lines are how they come from the Poisson and the GOE, and this is the experimental values on top. So as we change between delta less than one to five over J, you go from a GOE to a, to a Poisson distribution. Um, and uh, I just have like two minutes. That's not enough to check. I mean, the signature is there for the MBL, but we should actually really look at the extent of the states as well, because MBL says that the states, the eigenenergy in, in um, in, in, in space, for example, if I take one and uh, just pick any of the eigenenergies of the spectrum and I look how spread they are in the lattice side, I can calculate what's called the participation ratio for this, so PR space. The same thing I can do for the energy, which tells me, um, uh, sorry, how many energy eigenstates are in each lattice site, and this is the reverse. One eigenenergy in how many lattice sites it goes. So, Extracting again the, the eigen energies from the spectroscopy, we did this and we saw the following. That, um, and this is kind of the main result, 
that as you increase the disorder, you go from, this is the, the Obrio Andre value, and similar here now, here we have the PR energy, and this is a PR space. You have a kind of a two photon mobility edge as you increase the delta. First, the edges go into the next phase where the middle follows later on. And okay, and the, the last slide is how efficient this method is in terms of really doing many body physics. As you increase the lattice size, if you really want to, to extract the, the spectrum, at some point the, 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 the eigenstates will get too close compared to your resolution, basically. And what's the resolution here is the coherence of the system. So if you really have the thermodynamic limit, of course everything fails, but experiments do not really, are not really done in the thermodynamic limit. So what we've done here, I mean, for 18 size, which is twice as big, and, and, and keeping the same coherence time that the guys have in the, in the Google chip, we plotted the percentage of mission levels as a function of U and J, and we see that, uh, so you get the maximum like 30% around here, but this is not too bad if you see how far the distribution that you get compared to the ideal distribution is. So even at this kind of, uh, quite larger sites, which you have actually uh, uh, many, many levels that you miss, it will still work because at the end it's statistics, what you're looking for. And uh, I'm fi I finish here. So I, I hope I kind of gave you a, a taste of what one can do with interacting photons. You can look at the ground state physics, you can look at the full spectrum uh, of, of many body models. You can do quantum home physics. I didn't talk about this much. And we would like in the future to look more in the interface between topology interaction and disorder. Maybe look at, uh, we're already looking at this, at floquet driving and time-dependent stuff as we had in the morning as well by, by Dieter. And also hopefully try to get to test these proposals we have on these chips. And also we continue in this integrated chips and slow light stuff. So I would like to thank the group again. and. Uh, uh, then we have openings as well. If anybody is interested, please write to me. Thank you.